Hi, my name's Costas. Hi, I'm Chris. Welcome to this week's episode of the Weekly Magazine. Week. Chris. Yes, hi. I'm going to have to get a I Love Chris Commander t-shirt or something. Why? All these comments about your performances on the last <laughs> show that you were on. Thanks, guys. Thank much you appreciated. so much. It means a lot. It really does. <laughs> Thanks, darling. I'll replace you for a new model next time. Ooh. <clears throat> Three great products this week. But first of all, before we get to the products, last week's competition yes. was... I love double back because, because dot, 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 dot. Would you like to choose a winner? I'd love to. Uh, Rusty has a week off. Here we go. Uh, do, do, do. Dun, 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 dun. Dun. Benny Weber. Benny Weber. Benny Weber. Benny, Weber. first time I think you entered the competitions, but if you see this, send us a message yes. that you are the winner. And uh, we'll send you your prize. It's going to be a good one. Yes, it will. No idea what it is yet, but we find something for you. Yeah. Competition for next week. Competition for next week. Before we get to the competition, the yeah, three products, products we'll be talking about today is a new product that arrived this morning. Arthur by Chris Will. Uh, Against All Odds by Alakazam Magic. And Calamonte. I really love this effect. Yeah. Great blast. Really good. So, due to having against all odds that uses lottery numbers, this week's competition is lottery based. Yes. Lottery tickets in the UK have got 49 numbers. We want you to send us five numbers. You can only enter once. We'll all accept your first submission. Correct. If you get one of the numbers right, if you get one of the numbers right, we'll give you a pound on your online account. Get two numbers right, we'll give you what we're going to give them? We're going to give you five pounds. Five pounds. If you get three numbers right, we'll give you 15. If you get four or five, it will be an even better prize. Yeah. So send us five numbers, and next week we will stop this, pick the numbers out in front of the camera, then go back and work out who's won what, how many people have won, all that kind of jazz, Fantastic. and come back and let everyone know. So let's get on to the first once over. Right. Our first once over this week is Arthur by Christopher Wheel. Let's watch live performance and we'll come back and discuss it. Hi, Rachel. Hi. Uh, the Legend of King Arthur. Okay. Are you familiar with The Legend of King Arthur? Uh, ish. Well, we're going to go through a little bit of the story of one of the legends, which is the sword and the stone. Okay. A Disney movie was based on it. Arthur was born the son of Uther Pendragon, King of England. Oh. And he was secretly hidden away to be raised by one of the allies of the king, Sir Ector, and his son, Sir Kay. Okay. He didn't know anything about his royal lineage or anything like that. And then Sir Uther Pendragon became very ill and died. And since there was no heir to the throne, per se, because they didn't know about Arthur, um, they were called upon Merlin, the great sorcerer, to find a solution. Yeah. So he erected a stone in the middle of a churchyard in Westminster. This will be our stone. Right. And in the stone he put a sword. So will you do the honours of picking the sword? Anyone you like. Right, perfect. And just uh, turn it upside down. Face up. Yeah, face up. Perfect. And that will be our sword. That's going to go right in the stone. Hence the sword in the stone. Okay. Now, the sword was magic, Merlin explained. And he said that only the true king of England could pull the sword from the stone. Yeah. So many noblemen came by and tried their luck and tried to pull the sword out of the stone without prevail. <laughs> it was stuck in the stone, sword <laughs> in the stone. When Arthur was 15, he was brought before the stone. A crowd gathered, and in that crowd was his stepbrother, Sir Kay. With, with some arrogance and bravado, Sir Kay stepped forward to try his hand. And he again pulled and pulled, and he couldn't get the sword out of the stone. Mm -hmm. But Arthur, as we know, the true king of England, he tried his luck, and he pulled the sword, go on, right out of the stone. Just like that. <laughs> now you've just seen the live performance for Arthur, but Chris will. It arrived the morning of us filming this review. Yep. So we, uh, when watching the trailer, we thought that looks really good. So as soon as it arrived, we uh, played around with it. 
We learnt it, went out and performed it, and all I can say is that this is a cracking effect. It really is. It really is. Sometimes you watch a trailer and you think there's something that's not miss. Yeah, it's yeah that's, that's not being shown. Whatever. Yeah, cuts and all that kind of stuff. But what you see in the trailer is actually what happens. Absolutely. Get someone to choose a card. Yep. Gets placed in the deck, and you talk about King Arthur and all that kind of jazz, and you pull. You pull. You put the card in, and you pull the pack out. And the card, and then you can in. separate it and take the card out. Yeah, um, take the card. Whoop. Which is that? There is really nothing. We there's not a lot you can say about this effect because it's what it is. What you see is what you get. It's a solid effect. A very solid, solid effect. Yeah, <laughs> solid <laughs> effect. A bit of hint there. Yeah. Um, if you like what you see you're going to like performing it. Yeah, if you like what um, you see, that's what you get. You can't perform many effects with the deck, it is gimmicked. Um, yeah. If you're going to perform packet effect, yes you can, but you are limited to what you can do. Yes. It's really well structured, yeah. really well made and presented of course. Yep. And there's some handling on the uh, instructional video that will just teach you how to um, place it safely so you can use the rest of the pack as a normal pack and all kinds of stuff like that. It's actually very, there's no, there's no sleight of hand or anything like mm -hmm. that. It works. Yep. Um, and it's a cheap effect as well. It's only about 28 pounds, 27.99. Don's up from Don. Don's already taken, you know, we <laughs> say this, he's already got one. And he's probably the first person in the UK to have one as well. Yeah. Uh, so if you like Arthur, it's easy to do, self-working, yeah. fun to play with. And you're gonna have a lot of fun with this. Yeah. Highly recommended. The second one sold today is the Against All Odds by Alakazam Magic. Let's watch a live performance of Chris performing this and then we come back and have a good discussion about it. The lottery. Okay. There are 64 million people in the UK. Yes. A bit more than 64 million. Okay. If each one of those person played the lottery, mm -hmm. that would be a 64 million to one chance that you or I could win the lottery. Yes. But it's been done. People have won. So it's not impossible. It's just very improbable. Yeah. So inside this little envelope is a lottery ticket. Okay. You're going to hold on to that. Okay. Okay. So I can't come through. And when the lottery became very, very popular, especially in the 50s, you used to be able to go to shops and find novelty ways of picking your lucky lottery numbers. Yeah. Some people use their birthdays and so forth and so forth, so you think it's lucky, or have unlucky numbers like 13 that they never pick. Um, but I just went to the pound shop and picked up one of these, because they have them. And what you're going to do is you're going to pick some lottery numbers okay. at random, hopefully as, as random as we can. Um, but in the UK, this is a deck of 52, but in the UK, the lottery only goes up to 49. Mm -hmm. So we don't need 52, 51, or 50. And the rest are shuffled randomly in the pack. So here's what we're going to do. Cut the pile. And complete the cut. So we don't, yeah, perfect, put that on top. And do that as many times as you like, so you don't know what the top card or the bottom card is, and so they're thoroughly mixed. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Good. Now, I'm going to leave this totally up to you. Okay. Take as many cards off the top and put them to one side as you like. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Good. Now this is up to you. Which pile feels lucky? That one. That one. You sure? Yeah. You want to add any more cards to that? Leave that as is? Yeah. Yeah? So we're going to take these, all these, yeah. for the last chance. Yeah. Yeah? Okay, good. Perfect. I want you to take those, right? And I want you to deal down onto the table. Yeah. As long as you have more than six cards, take the top card, put it on the table. And as long as you have more than six cards, because there are six numbers in the lottery, mm -hmm. you can deal as many cards as you like. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, so you only have one. Do you actually, no, keep that. Do you want to get rid of it or keep it? It's up to you. I'll get rid. You get rid of it? Yeah. Perfect. So we're down to exactly six cards. Yeah. In the middle of the pack. Mm -hmm. It's up to you. Take them and just deal six cards. Down. Oh, Back. turn them. Yeah, face down. Perfect. Great. So six cards. Yeah. Six random lottery numbers. Yeah. 
1 through 49. Yeah. Right, I'm going to take them. And uh, you get to do the honors of opening. I'll put them in uh, numerical order because they're a little mixed up. Uh, take the lottery ticket out. And when you read out the numbers one by one. Two. <laughs> nine. Pretty good. Well, one wouldn't get you anything. No. So nine. Nine. Two's pretty good. Sixty. Three is where you get into the money. Twenty-five. Twenty-five. <laughs> Thirty-seven. Thirty-seven. And forty-three. Magic number. Final ball. <laughs> forty-three. That's amazing. Oh my god. You've just seen a live performance of Against All Odds. You've got a solid three to five minutes routine here. Yes. Yeah, and you can you can stretch it out to a whole yeah you can stretch it out to a long routine standalone effect if you want. this is a really good routine yeah people like prediction effects absolutely and the fact that you got a lottery ticket yeah. with the outcome chosen by the spectator mm -hmm. makes this even stronger yeah and again the great thing about this it's self-working completely self-working this is completely self-working again <laughs> another one that don likes <laughs> self-working tricks Yes. You don't need to learn or do any slights. No. It's all routine. And it's all done uh, in the spectator's hands, really. They make all the choices and those are the ones that you go with. Well, that's the beauty of this. I actually got fooled with it because <laughs> um, you played, uh, well, you, you performed it to me yesterday. Yeah. And you're in a situation where you, you've got a choice to make out of the cards in a, yes. a pile that you've chosen. But it's actually a free choice. Absolutely free choice. That's um, um, there's that, no magician's force in it. Yeah, just, well, that's what I really liked about it because <laughs> there's no magician's force and the outcome is always the same all the time. Mm -hmm. When you uh, know the methods and stuff, you realise how sneaky this is. <laughs> and you know, it's I'm, quite sneaky. I'm quite. I'm not pleased that I got fooled by something <laughs> so simple. <laughs> yes. Um, which is great. <laughs> Again, if you like this type of effect. You don't, wanna, um, you don't want something that is complicated to do, you want something that's self-working, but something that's got a kicker. Very powerful. Um, ending. You also get a, like a stage version as well. Yes, you do. You get some uh, downloadable content that you can print out in giant cards. So you can do a parlor or a stage version, yep. which is a great bonus. Um, so it's not just a close-up effect, but it's really strong. What we've also got is um, the lottery ticket. Yep. This was made by um, Chris Commander <laughs> to look like a lottery ticket. So you can actually hand this out Yes. Um, at the end. Now, we've done this, so everyone that buys in Against All Odds from Magic Dell will receive a PDF in order to print these off. And it's just great, it's, a, it's an additional souvenir. Of course, if you wanted to, you can go to um, your local shop and get a lottery ticket yeah. with the numbers chosen, but they will be stamped by date. Yes, yeah, um, I so specifically made this so it doesn't have a date on it at all. And we've got a little story around it. It's the, the lottery of Magic Dale or Dale or whatever yeah. and all that kind of stuff. It looks authentic yeah. as far as anyone's concerned for the purpose of a magic trick. Yes. Um, and it's really well done. Fantastic work, mm -hmm. La Kazan, shall we say. Wee. And this is something I will be, um, I will be using. I think it's great, and yeah. next time, next opportunity, I'll be dishing it out. <laughs>do you collect any particular type of magic or accessory? Now, I do. Do you? I collect <laughs> smash, and, smash and stab routines. Oh, Probably yes. the only one I haven't got <laughs> is John <laughs> Adams' one. Yeah. I collect the razor blade illusion. In fact, I've probably got every single version out there. Yes. I love that effect. And third one, El Duco products. El Duco products? El Duco products. Anything <laughs> by El Duco, if I can get hold of and I haven't got, 
I lost the one second hour magic the other day, someone Aww. beat me to it. It's not fair. But also, I suppose you can say books. Yes. Hundreds and hundreds of books. Yes. If I haven't got it, I... You want it. Want it. <laughs> but I'm not sure if... Yeah, I suppose that's a collection. Yeah, it counts. So, who's going first? You are. I think you are. No, you definitely are. I'm not. You are. You totally Shall are. Shall we have an argument? Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> um, this is by Peter Burkett, the person that posted this question. Okay, cool. I collect some Taniel. Some people think it's kids' magic, but there are some good Taniel tricks out there too. Be had. His favourite is mini morphosis and golf ball in case. Loads of people collect Taniel items. Yes. I remember having a huge collection and getting rid of them on eBay Ouch. years ago. Ouch. Not realising the potential of the collection. Um, in fact, I know Ian Barradale, I think he's got every single one bar three. That's a 10 year collection to have. Ooh. If not the biggest Envious. in the world, apart from 10 year Ten years <laughs> uh, Faye Presto says, uh, I collect bags to carry the close up kit in. I've got about a dozen or so, still looking for the perfect item. Aren't we all? We were in their bags. Yeah. <laughs> Kieran the Fever, uh, I collect books, not that exciting. Normally, the rarer the better. I think that is exciting. I think, no, books... I think it is because a lot of people they don't buy books anymore Which, yeah. and when you start collecting books you, you, you end up having the standard classics Yes. and then you go on to trying to get hold of the rarer items yeah. and then it becomes an even more interesting collection to have. And we've had this discussion about um, one-off tricks versus buying a book with a collection yeah. of tricks and all that kind of stuff. Um, Edmund Thaddeus says, I tend to go for fire effects, bang ones, flash guns, torch to cane, torch to rose, fire on, f fire on palms, fire wallets, fire whip to cane, and then this last little sentence I've got to do is a rap. rap. Start the beat. It's going to be a terrible rap, but it rhymes at the end. We go, generally anything with fire or flame or flash in the name. That was pretty bad. It's pretty bad. It? But it rhymes. <laughs> Shall we cut it? No. Okay. Oh. Alan James Taylor, escapology <laughs> items, mainly cuffs and padlocks. Ooh. Which is uh, an interesting Ooh. one. Yeah. Something I've never really been into is escapology. Yeah, I I I uh I used to really love the idea of it, but I could never like get around to like buying I've always been interested in lock picks and all that kind of stuff and all that nonsense. I can, I, can, I can see um, a, a collection of escapology items to be a really interesting sight. Yes. With all these metal things and yes. padlocks and whatever else you, you, you might have. It's Christian Gray's back room. Yes. <laughs> John Horn. He says uh, gaff gaff sharpies. sharpies. I wouldn't have guessed why. <laughs> but yeah, I would like to see your gaff sharpie, sharpie collection. collection. Yeah, me too. He's going to be Ooh. striking us in a bit. <laughs> Ooh, show <laughs> us. Want to see my collection? <laughs> cool. Now that's it for this week, and let's get on with the show. This week's blast from the past is Emerson and West's Color Monty. Let's watch a live performance, and we'll be back to discuss it. When I was in France, I got hustled by this Frenchman. No, seriously, right, okay. in Paris. Because, you know, at least in Las Vegas, you've got hustlers all the time, but you don't yeah. expect in Paris, but there are some. He took out this little envelope and it had cards in. It had three cards in, as you can see, three cards, just like that. Uh -huh. He put that wallet to one side. Now the three cards, one had a red diamond spot on, another had a red diamond spot on, and the third one had a blue diamond. Right. Now, this was sort of like Find the Lady. So the blue diamond spot card was the magic card. Okay. He said, that's the one you have to find. Right? So as long as you can tell me where the blue spot card is, I will give you a euro. Okay. So I thought, that's okay. But while he was explaining this to me, he took the blue card and he put it on the bottom. Just like that. So then he asked me, he asked me, where do you think the blue spot card is? I thought I'd had him. I said, it's on, it's on the bottom. It's on the bottom. I saw you do the move. He said, unfortunately, you owe me a euro. I said, well, okay, fine. 50-50. If it's not 
on the bottom. It's gotta be on the top. He said that's another euro you owe me. He said, well, if it's not on the top, it's gotta be in the middle. It's gotta be in the middle. You've got three cards, it's gotta be in the middle. He said, yeah. no, that's another euro you owe me. <laughs> I said, well, you know what? This is ridiculous. I bet you don't even have a blue card in there. I bet you switched it out. He said, that's another euro you owe me. <laughs> I said, well, fine, that's impossible. If it's not on the bottom, it's gotta be on the top. It's not on the top. I said, if it's not on the top, it's got to be in the middle. It's got to be in the middle. But once again, he said, you owe me another euro. It's in the middle. I said, it's impossible. I've seen three red and three blue. You've got to have more than three cards. He said, you owe me another euro. I only have three cards. He said, you know what? I'll give you a chance to get your money back. Because by this time, I said, I quit. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out seven euro. I'm not going to do anything. I'm done. So he said, I'll give you a chance to get your money back. Double or nothing. What I'll do is I will show you two of the cards. All you have to do is tell me what color the third card is. Now, like you, my face was going. <laughs> Seriously, what would you think? What would you think? Red or blue? Red. See, that's what I thought, because there would have to be too many of them. <laughs> so I thought I'd hedge my bets. I said, knowing my luck, it's probably blue and red. <laughs> but uh, I said red, and he said, unfortunately, you owe me 14 euro. <gasps> Oh my god. I was trying so hard to watch them as well. <laughs> You've just seen the live performance for Carlo Monti. I really like this effect. What a classic! In fact, I think I'll say I really like this effect for all our blasts from the past. Yeah, but that's, that's the cool thing about blasts from the past. We sometimes dig deep and find products that either we've forgotten about or just are playing good. Because they're classics, they're good. You perform these effects, you get especially Carlo Monti. You get so much enjoyment out of performing this. With the right story, there's a lot of fun to be had. With current magic, it seems that I don't get as excited performing them as I do these classics that we've been doing for years. Yeah. You know, it's a cheap and cheerful packet trick. It's got a great story to it. And the visualness of the cards and yeah. All, yeah, yeah, yeah. all that kind of stuff it's is very strong. Ending. Yeah, the surprise ending is what make, actually makes it Absolutely. Okay. I prefer the American version because I remember the, when it first came out, of course, it was the dollar version. Right. Diamonds and dollar, $14, or whatever it was. And you had the story about going to Las Vegas and your ex being hustled on the yeah. corner of, um, of the road and that kind of stuff. And it had a great, great hook to it. The UK version, does it have such a strong hook? being based in the same country that you are, not sure. But whatever worse version you got, the, the routine is exactly the same and your pattern will be just slightly varied. That's a, it's um, a good point though, because talking about, that's what I like about all the products we have this week, are the fact that uh, they all are story based. Yeah. The trick works intricately with the story. I like that. It's great when you have a product that's got a story rather than just a, a quick visionless thing that yeah. is fast and it, it's finished before it started type yeah. thing. So all these effects that we've got today are really good and Color Monte, if you haven't come across one, again I say it's cheap, <laughs> buy it, you'll have a lot of fun with it. It's not that complicated to do. No, it's the same moves twice. You just need to remember the sequence. Yep. Uh, <laughs> as with every magic trick, you've got to learn it, so it's not that difficult to learn, and you're going to have a lot of fun performing Color Monte. And you can just put it in your wallet or a playing card holder or something and just bring it out and perform it whenever the need arises. Need arises. Need arises. Show me a magic trick. I'll oh, show them Color Monte. Yeah. Fantastic. Catch you later. This week we spoke about three great effects. I would highly recommend Arthur. It's a great effect, no sleight of hand or anything, works itself. And if you like the performance, you're gonna love performing this. And again, Against All Arms by Alakazam Magic. If you like that type of prediction, prediction effect, works itself. Absolutely. It's self-working, it's easy to do, but the outcome is just, it's fantastic. And again, Color Monte. If you haven't got Color Monte, go out and buy it. You're gonna have a lot of fun performing this. Yeah. You know, you're gonna have a lot of fun 
and the satisfaction of performing an effect that is many years old rather than one of the new effects that you're just going to put in your back drawer. So buy Colour Monty yes. and go out and perform <laughs> it. Again, the competition for this week is five numbers. We will draw five numbers next on next week's show and work out who got one number right, two, three, four, five, and we will give you an, a prize accordingly. One number will give you one pound credit on your online account. Two numbers, 10 pounds. Five pounds. Two numbers is five pounds. Let's make it 10 pounds. 10 pounds, okay. Cool. And um, three numbers, 20 pounds on your online account. So why don't we just change it? Cool, great, done. Because Easy. we are actually building a new website. Yeah. And um, it's not live yet, but some of it is being tested. So this would help us test various features and stuff yeah. like that. We've got a lot of things happening at Magic Dow at the moment. We've got a lot of releases we're working on. You'll soon be seeing a new style of trailer, new yeah. style of um, packaging, packaging, yeah. new style of filming our DVDs. Yes, um, very exciting life changes. stuff. Again, when the website goes live, there's going to be even more features that we're going to be testing out and you'll be benefiting from. At the end of this, we'll also have a trailer for our next release. Ooh. So watch until the end and watch Box Pad by Gary Jones. Yay. Until next time, Chris Commander and Costa Stamianu. Bye! Right now I'm going to try and distract you for a second and the pen is going to change into a pack of cards. Sorry, what I meant to say was that the, uh, the, the notepad is going to change into a pack of cards. It's, it's happened. I can't. <laughs> I, did, I did say it was going to be quick. <laughs> Notepad changes into a pack of cards, right? From which you did you see it? <laughs> I told you it was quick. <laughs> it was fast, I did, I did warn you it was quick. Oh, it's gonna. Oh, yeah, well, it was... <laughs>